Hello my soccer universe, two relatively prominent positions in European soccer, now you let me use the term soccer more on that tomorrow, uh, have been vacated oh, since yesterday. The first one is of course Hansi Flick, for a step down, uh, uh, was relieved of his duties as German uh, coach, first ever German coach to be relieved of his duties. And then, and I want to start with that in Spain, Luis Rubiales finally stepped down. And I have not much, to, I have not mentioned much of this on my channel. It is just so bad this entire story. Uh, the action itself was already despicable. The kiss on Jenny Hermoso after the World Cup final. However, I think this could have been very quickly relieved if Rubiales would have had the guts to actually properly apologize rather quickly when he sees there's a storm coming yes they were traveling blah blah when this was developing but someone should brief him and you know apologize and this is all over with but him holding on and giving that despicable press conference or not a uh, members meeting of the spanish football fair for federation where everyone else got implicated that dad, dad was clapping and so on it was a spectacle that shows the worst thing of uh, male matrism. This reeked of Trump in the worst matter. Finally got his senses together way too late and stepped down and finally he's gone. Don't want to see that guy ever again. But the one thing that really got me the most that he's more or less the same age as I am and you know if he was 10 20 20 20, 20, 20 years older i would understand his actions probably a little bit better but him being i don't want to call myself a youngster but him not reading the signs at this age sorry sorry can't do it but we'll spend definitely more time on hansi flick because you know that one is a little bit more difficult or that I have, have a few more thoughts because the Rubiales affair, that's very clear cut for me. This guy had to go. And I hope this you will see kind of this unfolding of, you know, uh, getting rid or uh, addressing machism in Spain, which I can very well see that this is still an issue there. It is still an issue here in Austria as well to a certain degree, maybe not as much and uh, especially for the skiing team, you see a lot of things coming up these days and having this reckoning on the world uh, stage, yes, it is sad that no one is talking about the brilliant Spanish team. However, I think in a larger context is something good that happened here. Yes, a little bit of spotlight taken away, but an even bigger spotlight is put on it and I think there's lasting change coming. So maybe in that sense, if they wouldn't have won the World Cup, nothing, things, things were still a faster, but now they got rid of Jorge Wilder and all that kind of, I think change is afoot, I hope so. Let's go over to Germany. Uh, I honestly, I don't watch friendlies. For me, they are tedious, they are necessary, uh, especially when you go in the stadium and you charge full price for them. So I only followed the whole Germany situation from the sideline. However, my thoughts on it were, that, you know, Hansi Flick, I really had in high regard of what he did for Bayern Munich when he won the Champions League and so on. I mean, uh, that was pretty outstanding. And they played quite excitingly. And I thought him going to the German national team where he will uh, have less noise from the other because this is what made him step down from Bayern. That actually might work quite well for him. Now, he started well, had some low opponents to be honest, but in the end they qualified for the World Cup where I still maintain uh, while they got eliminated on merit if you would like to uh, say uh, it was basically just a lackluster performance against Japan where Japan they controlled that game and Japan struck at the right moment and they didn't have the defense they played a really good game against Spain that was one of the best games of the um, group stage to be honest and then yeah uh, things fell against them because Spain also couldn't beat Japan so uh, in that sense I think it was a little bit of an unlucky elimination it was not as bad as the one four years earlier however now and I have not watched it yet 
I probably will watch it, but it is interesting. There is an Amazon Prime documentary uh, for the German national team, and seemingly you see already divisions in the dressing room that uh, he cannot reach the players as he would like to. That is now followed up by a real bad run of friendly results, uh, some rather bad defeats in there, and the latest one a 1 4 against Japan and everyone with Germany hosting the Euros next year everyone was you know the German national team is on a popularity scale as low as it can be I've barely ever seen the German national team be so low uh, and it's that you cannot identify the German national uh, public cannot identify with the players because you know the outcome there's no personalities in there and if you go on German TV there's only personalities. There's Lothar Matthäus always opening uh, his mouth. There is Didi Hamann here and there, although he's more or less a quiet type, but he also, he bursts out his opinions. There is, of course, uh, on discussions, there's usually Thomas Effenberg, uh, Thomas, uh, Stefan Effenberg, Thomas Helmer, and Mario Basler. Also, very mouthy players. So, quite there. Then you have on other TV channels, I think we had Stefan Kuntz, uh, uh, before he became the Turk, Turkey coach, we had, of course, um, Sandro Wagner, recently retired. So all these pundits, let everyone, and everyone, like almost anywhere in a big football nation, everyone knows that they're better than what's happening. However, I honestly didn't want to pay much attention to that for one simple reason. It is freaking friendlies. Players don't give it their all in friendlies, and so you don't expect good performances. As simple as that. Really, as simple as that. And in the run-up to the 2006 World Cup, Germany has an equally bad streak, but they struck, stuck to Klinsmann. I remember them beating 4-1 by Italy uh, in, the, in 2006 it, it itself, and then they made this miracle run that suddenly the German team was playing almost out of nowhere really excitingly and modern so i didn't think much of it but you know when i saw the result against japan i really felt yeah okay that's it for hansi flick and i didn't expect him to be fired immediately i thought it will be afterwards because they have a game of against france coming up but they acted right there they said it's not competitive any, any, anymore he has to go he's the first german coach to be fired and that less than a year before the euro start that's utter chaos in the German Football Federation and the German Federation hasn't had a good run. I mean, the women have a similar bad run after reaching the final just at the Euro women's Euros. Nah, it doesn't look quite good. Let's face it. Uh, and also, you know, Bayern Munich being a super team will also know, not doing quite well. I think it's also indicative that at Bayern it's not, all, not anymore that the best German players are playing there but it's kind of the best German players are now in England and uh, it's all it's a little bit all over the place and there's a definite identity crisis and so now the big question is who will succeed now for uh, at first for the game against France there will be Rudi Völler who was in charge of the German national team for the 2002 World Cup and Euro 2004. 2002 World Cup, a very lucky run that ended in the final. Still the most unworthy finalist that you will ever find in any World Cup. I challenge you to prove me wrong there. And then the Euro 2004 elimination in a group stage against a Czech B team. So, but he already said he's only sporting director. He will only do this for now. He's not going to fulfill that role. And on his side will be Hannes Wolf, who is a young, mostly TV expert, but a young, excitingly coach, not really <laughs> anymore. He's more, more, mostly on TV, but he explained tactics quite well. And Sandro Wagner, as a TV expert, I really like, like him because he makes opinions. Not sure how he's doing his coaching. So, yeah. That's what's happening as far as, but who will be the success? And this to me is the most interesting part of the fall because there's not an obvious one. There's really not an obvious one there. For me, the two most obvious candidates are kind of taken as national teams. This is Ralf Rangnick, who is Austrian coach. And it's Domenico Tedesco, who is doing actually good things in Belgium as well. And the way Belgium started under him was quite exciting. But those are taken. And now the names that are popping is, of course, Nagelsmann. I don't see Nagelsmann as a national team coach. I think Nagelsmann is more of a club coach and he's known for his complicated tactics. Not gonna happen. I don't think that Nagelsmann is the right choice. 
uh, especially when he already had some trouble at Bayern with most of these same players. I cannot quite see it. Maybe, maybe, but I think Nagelsmann would be a long-term appointment, not short-term get, getting it going. The Federation, of course, wants Jurgen Klopp. Not gonna happen. I think Jurgen Klopp would also see this as after he's done with Liverpool. Then I can see him taking the German national team. Uh, <laughs> there are some funny names being mentioned. I mean, Stefan Kunz, who is about to be fired as Turkish national team coach. Yeah, that is a re resume that, that will work. Uh, Rudi Völler is sometimes mentioned. Felix Magath is mentioned, uh, which I think would be completely going back uh, on it. Lothar Matthäus is being mentioned, although I think Lothar Matthäus' coaching record is so bad that I think he should stay, stay on the TV pundit, where I think he's actually doing a decent job, although he is falling sometimes in a little bit, you know, a we were better than the players are today. Cad category. And then the one that intrigues me most, Oliver Glasner. Former coach of Wolfsburg, and I find they won the Europa League, seen as an absolute expert. But he was not long ago the coach of Lusk, and he would be the first non German coach. And if an Austrian is taking over the German national team, as highly as I rate Oliver Glasner, it's a coach that I would take any time. But an Austrian coaching the German national team, that would be something else. Most Germans would say we should stop playing. And it would lead even to a more curious scene is that at the end of the year, the Austrian national team is having a friendly against Germany. And if Oliver Glasner would be the coach, we would have an Austrian coach for the German team and a German coach for the Austrian team. Maybe they can make a switch there. But this is an appointment I'm looking very much forward to because this is not a straightforward one. And I don't have a good solution, to be honest. I don't at this moment. Uh, I think they need someone who could work with these players. Uh, motivational talent should be there for sure, but also tactical now, because this is what, I think this German national team is very undervalued. If you get the right coach in there with the right tactics, this German team can do quite some damage, but not the way it is to run at the moment. Who do you think should be the German national team coach? I would really like to know, give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, talk to you soon, bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon, so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!